In this video, we're going to be talking about the Playwright Code Gen Inspector. This allows you to build tests by clicking through your app, and then the inspector will generate tests for you. The first thing we'll show is how you can install this. So I'm going to do this with Python, but you could use JavaScript as well. To install Playwright on Python, you would do pip install Playwright. Once that's installed, you have access to the Playwright CLI. And in that CLI, you'll see that you have a whole bunch of options that you can do with Playwright. And the one we're going to be focused on today is this code gen, where you can open a page and generate code for user actions. The first way to open that is with Playwright code gen. And that will open you up to a blank page and you can navigate and go to it. The second way you can do that is with Playwright code gen and then paste a URL and then that'll start your test at your URL. So the first thing we'll show here is that we have our website and then we have the inspector. So you can see here that it's set for Python and that we have the start of a new test here. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is that when you go to this dropdown, you can actually choose a language. So you can choose what it looks like in Java, JavaScript, Python async, or the C-sharp library. So no matter what, you can always switch between these different libraries so if we click on one of these here, you can see that when we clicked on that, it added our page click to text sample, sample app. But if we go over to C sharp, we can see that same click async here. So just know that no matter which framework you want to write your tests in, you can use this app to do that, to kind of get you started. And you can see here when we click on something, and we if we add in a name like Jim and a password here, and then I'm going to click login. If we look at the test, so we went to the new page, we went to the UI testing playground, we clicked on text sample app, and then we clicked on a placeholder for username. What you'll notice is that the Playwright code gen always tries to favor text selectors if possible. There's probably no text in this so that it took uh, the placeholder of username instead. It'll shell out at least a good test out for you so that you can go place better selectors if you're using something like React and need a more dynamic selector. So here you can see that I had to click in and then it did a fill. Ideally, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do a click first. We would just be able to do page fill. You can see it also caught my keystrokes where I press tab. And then you can also see I did a fill here and then a click. There, there was no assertion being made. This really gives a good framework for tests, and it also does that without you having to know anything about the API. So if you're just learning Playwright, this is probably a good place to start to see um, whatever you do in the app, you can see what it looks like in the code. When you click on this Explorer, it lets you actually see different selectors on the page. So th these are what it would select on, and you can see it's always favoring those texts. But then here, it's gonna use placeholders, there's text logout. You get some funkier ones here. If you hit F12 on the page, here you can see that the sample app heading is in an H3. So if we come over here, when we type an H3 into this Explorer, we can see what gets selected. So then if we did something like text equals JIM, we can see that it takes this, takes this one first over, over this one here. So this is just a good way to see what the page sees. Hopefully in the future they add some more features that allow you to write more complete tests. But right now, without the certs, you can still copy and paste out these to your tests and have decent runnable working tests, especially if you're not very familiar with the API for Playwright.